The year was 2007, and I was standing in front of 1643 Raleigh Street. I was a general contractor, and it was my first entry into being a real entrepreneur. I was in the DU neighborhood, and my clients were the investor. They purchased this house for $270,000. They were investing $70,000 into the home, and they were hopefully going to sell it for $410,000, coming away with a nice profit. Three months earlier, my parents gave me this. I don't know if you uh, have ever seen one of these before. It's called a foot cam. And it was the first time you could record HD video in your hand. It was before the video cameras came out in smartphone. And I'm looking at this and, and holding it and hitting my head with it, saying, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? On video? I'm not an actor. I'm not an entertainer. I'm not a stand-up comedian. I know if I try to remember these lines, they're all going to come out wrong. So what do I say? What do I say? And then it hit me. I know what I'll say. I'll just do the same thing I've been doing six times a day anyways. See, at the time, I was the general contractor. And I would walk through homes just like this one with investors and subcontractors and talk about what needed to be done. And that's exactly what people on the internet wanted to look at. And so I said, I'm standing in front of 1643 Raleigh Street. The investors just purchased this house for $270,000. they are investing $70,000. Hopefully we're going to sell for four hundred and ten. dollars And we're about a week and a half into the construction. I'm going to take you walking through this house. As you can see, the outside, this lava rock facade is going to get a stucco treatment over the top. You know, that was trending back in the 60s, but not anymore. Uh, and then here inside the front door, you can see that we've taken down the cabinets, we've repaired the drywall, we put up the trim, and the texture, we're starting to prime the walls. And here in the hallway, we've got Javier, who's installing the flooring. Uh, Javier, would you mind telling the people watching at home what you're doing there? And he looked at me. It was a stark look. And then he broke into it. Well, yes, of course, Anthony. What we have here is a 12-inch travertine tile that's going down in a pinwheel pattern. And there's a really nice bone grout. And I'm going to polish it and seal it. You're going to love it, man. I said, whoa. Javier, that was a very good explanation. Thank you very much. I'm sure the people at home really appreciate that. And I walked to the backyard and said, now we've got a garage and a new foundation being put in back here. And in that moment, I realized I had something that was both very educational and entertaining. And it was very evidentiary of what I could do. People watching at home could see the cleanliness of my job site. They could see the relationship I had with my subcontractor. And they saw me vulnerable completely as the young, ambitious general contractor that I was. So I took that video and I published it to YouTube. And the next day, a homeowner who wanted to remodel his kitchen called me and said, would you come give me a quote on my kitchen remodel? That was a job for $50,000. And I sold that job because it was 90% sold with the video. He can look at my video and make a split second decision. Is that somebody I could work with or not? And I know that I'm not a good fit for everyone, but I do know that there's enough people out there in the world who are enough like me that we're going to be a great partnership together. That I'm going to be able to anticipate their needs well enough to give them a great experience. And that's the only person I was talking to that day, was just that person. Because I, I only wanted to speak to the person who had the, enough money and a need for what I did. 
that's, that's what I looked like back in 2007. My, my company was triage remodeling. And I would drive this truck around and did just about everything. Remodel and fix and flip a home. But in that moment, I realized I was going to give up my tools. And I was going to give up my tools because I realized how to architect a sale with video. See, before that, I was in corporate sales. And I would making 30 to 40 phone calls a day. I'd be running at least two appointments a day and sending out two proposals a day. And all that work, week's worth of prospecting would generate me a sale. In this scenario, all I did was record myself doing what I'm doing all the time anyways and publishing it so people could find it. People who were looking for me already could find it. So here's an example of some keywords that if you type them into the Google search engine will produce a video on the first page of Google. And these businesses, my business, we're not paying anything for that result. But if you know anything about Google advertising, you know that some people spend thousands of dollars every month to appear on the first page of Google. So this was my discovery. This was my reason for changing my career and for teaching business owners that there's a new way to message and it starts with your, your ability <coughs> to just understand how video works more effectively. And, it, and it's very simple. You just create a video on your smartphone and you upload it to YouTube. Done the right way, the Google spiders will crawl this information that you publish and it will see it as very relevant, therefore putting it on the first page of Google. So that's the live demonstration that I have to share with you today. If you'd like to see how that's done, you're in the right place because <coughs> I'm going to do it live with you all here in the class. So it starts with this. 90% of people today solve their daily problems with this. They realize that this is the fastest way to get the answer to what their, whatever their question is in life. And if you don't know what people are typing in to, to look for you or your competitor, then that's where you should start. Those sequence of words put together are producing results that you could be a good result for, but instead of finding you, they're finding your competitor, and your competitor can't do what you do. Only you can do that. So your goal then is to figure out how to get there so that you exist, so that you can be found, so that you can be one of the options that they choose from. These two guys got together about uh, 17, 18 years ago in the center of the Silicon Valley, Stanford University, and they said, whoa, we can fix this thing called the internet. Because at the time, it wasn't giving people the results they were looking for. It was kind of odd. There was pop-ups. Uh, there was distractions. You weren't really getting where you were going. And they said, we can fix this thing if we focus on one thing. If we give people what they want, they'll keep coming back to us. And that's what Google has done. They've given us all these free tools. They've given us email, they've given us uh, cloud storage, they've given, given us a free phone number in Google Voice, they've given us uh, all these great internet tools so that we keep coming back, keep using their platform. So we have to take a cue from these two guys, and we have to give our customers what they want. And they, they keep they track of the behavior. money to afford orthodontics. <laughs> you think. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but they keep track of behavior, and they know that people like video, that people prefer to consume their information with a short video. And it's because, you know, if a picture can say a thousand words, a video can say 50,000 words or more. So let's take a cue from Larry and Sergey, and let's give people what they want. It's kind of a peek behind the Google algorithm. We can actually throw out that whole list of algorithmic rules 
and just focus on that one thing, giving people what they want, giving them a good experience. So here's my agenda for today. Uh, for any training, it's the what, the how, and then the acid test. That's my favorite part. And it works like four out of five times, maybe, maybe a little better, five out of six times. But we're going to cross our fingers after we publish this video to YouTube. We're going to hope that it, it does indeed come up on the first page of Google. This is a Venn diagram, though, of the whole video production industry. And it's, it's seen quite a, a mix-up or a change in the industry. Before this revolution, you could only have two out of the three. It could be good and fast, but it wasn't going to be cheap. That's professional video that we, we understand, right? We know we can get a Hollywood-level video that's good and fast, as long as we spend money. And it's tough to justify spending that money, because we don't know what we're going to get out of it. We don't have any experience doing these videos. So how can we be certain that our money is going to be well spent? It could be fast and cheap, but it's probably not going to be good. Let's think about uh, you know, the kid that's just taken the media, or the video production class. And it could be good and cheap, like an independent film. Some of those are really good, but it's not fast. Because it takes that one person years, maybe, to compile all the information, to edit all the material before they have their masterpiece. But what didn't used to exist now does exist, and I'm here to prove it. I've proven it for several businesses, and I'd like to prove it for you here today. That Yes, indeed, we can do fast, cheap, and good. So here's some, some statistics I found on video as a business tool. Video as a component of your messaging. And I just wanted to put these statistics up here to help you with the why. Why video? Why invest your time into learning video? Video wasn't taught in any medical or business class, really, when we went to school. But now it's painfully obvious that if we're not doing video, we're falling behind. And so how do we integrate video? How do we start? How do we get going? How do we make it a successful endeavor from the beginning so that we're motivated to keep doing it. I used to work for one of the pioneers in video production. His name was Mark Camacho of 81 Media International. And he told me stories of 30 years ago when he was one of the first guys in Denver with a digital video camera. Actually, it was a beta cam that he would convert to digital using uh, Avid, which was the first digital video editor. Anybody got a guess on how much the first digital video editor cost? 50 grand. 50 grand. It was mainly for newsrooms. Any other guesses? 100. A lot more than 100. 50 grand. <laughs> was for newsrooms. For newsrooms, right? He mortgaged his house so that he could buy Avid for half a million dollars. And he, find, he made his final payment two years ago when he left for San Diego. <laughs> Mainly, his, his, uh, his career was in real estate investing, but I got the, the ability to just shadow him for a few years and watch what he did. And, and it's no different back then than it is today, except we use our smartphones instead of a half a million dollar tool. Major television broadcasting stations had the monopoly on video advertising. And a minimum spend for broadcast television, whether it was local or national, you know, was six figures or more. So now we've got the ability to create videos at little to no cost and then broadcast that video to our neighbors within a four mile radius of our clinic or our business so that we can just introduce ourselves to them using the most effective communication tool, video. And that's, that's really the, the weight of my demonstration today. That's what it has the ability to do. So to just put a, an exclamation point on this, yes, video has the ability to communicate 80% better than print, text, or audio because of body language. This is my gestures. This is my gait. This is my tone. 
my rhythm. You can, you can make a different gesture by turning your head and then your eyes than you can if you turn your eyes and then your head. These are all the nonverbal communications that is going on that is conveying a message. Is this somebody I can trust? And that's really what a sale is. It's building trust up to a level where we're ready to exchange large sums of money. We're using all three of the main teaching methodology, uh, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. We're actually clicking on the video. And Seth Godin said that communication is the transfer of emotion. Emotion plus information equals communication. He also said that companies who use their smartphone better than their competitors will thrive in the new year. So I've got a quick activity for you. Turn to your friend, turn to your neighbor, hand them your phone in camera mode, and you're going to com communicate with body language. You're going to demonstrate that your nonverbal communication is more effective than your verbal communication. You want us to take a video. So, or just a photo. Just a photo. Just a photo for now. Turn your phone into camera mode, pass it to your neighbor, and. Oh boy. And so you, you just want them to gesture? To gesture. Five things. Happy, sad, angry, surprised, and curious. All right, so, so now number one is happy. All right, so five, sorry. somebody else, the camera, talk about your business and what you do. Uh, this is a slide I put together about the ability for anybody in an organization to take on the role of a video spokesperson. You can delegate jobs that are mundane and repetitive <coughs> as easily as the CEO can tell people who have never heard of your company before what you do, or to pass down cultural uh, leadership training to its existing employees. Just as a side note, uh, if, if you're the CEO or representative of a, or any organization, if, if you have not undergone video or media training, mm -hmm. just look at Prince Andrew's interview. 
about now all the, the videos you've ever seen that you didn't like. So we can brainstorm and I can write down all the different things about video that we should avoid. Sound good? Okay. Usually this works in a small enough room, so I'm just going to crank the This is Gerald Ebert. Welcome to my video blog. Gerald Ebert. This is my introduction and it's oh telling you what this is about. This video blog is about becoming an entrepreneur and basically the struggles and everything else that I have to go through to become one. Right now I'm just a small business owner and I've been running my own businesses for about 20 years and I have a pretty good business plan worked out for this one and I have decided this time to spend all my energy to working on the business instead of in the business and say, I'm an entrepreneur instead of the person who works for himself. I have a lot of confidence that I can accomplish it and hopefully uh, we'll learn something along the way and it won't be too painful of a process. Uh, this is one of the most stressful times is that of my uh, <laughs> career because it is uncharted territory for me. I no longer have the ability uh, to just lighting. what lighting. Live, you know, lighting. Work, lighting. You know, yeah. And make sure all the money's coming in. So I bad body stands. Bad body stands. Stationary one place. Uh, very confident. Confident people that He's work leaning for on me. a chair. And yeah. <laughs> They have enthusiasm. The, yes, no enthusiasm, no passion. Okay, something only in their hands. Job. Kids gesture. And not smiling. Just, yeah, not smiling. He uses Somebody's the word confident a lot. You're seeing everything the antithesis is confident. Right? I, I, Young, I, 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 I've thought that too. Yeah. A team that can help. <laughs> you want him on your team. <laughs> it looks like he's leading. And get us through the. He's uh, leading whatever he's saying. It appears to be uh, into yeah. a yeah, he leads on a chair to the yeah, yeah, that that was just spelled. Yeah, that misspelling was just on that last sentence. So they have over 100 yeah. employees. The background's that's disturbing. Okay, so I guess to go back here to <laughs> summarize, uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of things he's doing right. The one thing he did wrong, there's a lot of things he's doing wrong. The one thing he did right is actually get up and do a video. I mean, he's got a video. Oh, could he connect with one of the seven billion people on Earth? Maybe. He's got a, he's got a bigger chance now. <laughs> there might actually be somebody out there among all seven billion of us that might take a look at this and say, yeah, this guy, let's work together. I don't know, but one of the, my pet peeves is that he's making a video for himself. He's not making a video for the viewer. And that's who the video is for. So, the, it's not, uh, I see a lot of people introducing themselves right off the bat. I don't think it's about them. I think the video they make is about the viewer. So they should state that right away. This video is for you if you wanna learn this. This is what I've found. This is what can help you. It's not about what I'm going to talk about today, and, and it's not about him. So I say, don't start your video off with, here's what I'm going to talk about today, or my name is, because that's a great way to get somebody to flip right past your video, that nobody's going to watch something just because it's about you, unless you've already built a relationship with them. But this is a video about somebody that you've never met before. Most likely, you're designing the video to introduce yourself to somebody who has never met you. What's the average dwell time on a video on the internet? I say one minute. I say somebody's not willing to give you or sacrifice a minute of their time if they've never heard of you before or they don't know what you do. 
After you've earned their trust in that one minute, great, double it. Now you've got two minutes to continue to earn their trust. But the first video that they watch of you, I don't think it should be any longer than a minute. You should be able to tell them everything you need to say in one minute and let them decide after that if they want to see more or if they never are going to do business with you. Question. Um, so I want to make a comment um, and I want to make sure it's taken in the right way. Okay. So what I've noticed is that you're wonderfully natural right now in the last, except for the first two or three minutes, uh, everything about you is engaging, natural, the other thing. The first minute or two, I think you contradicted what you just mentioned as far as you, you came across kind of robotically as someone who just took a course on, you gotta tell your story, you know, it was my, the year was something, remember, my name is Anthony, here is what I did. It, it came across, um, it was the only part that lost me in a sense because it didn't seem like a natural person. It seemed like basically that you were instructed that you start out with, you know, my story, mm -hmm. you know, and, that, and, the, and the kind of thing that showed the card and everything like that. And then everything since then has been terrific. So that's just my observation that, you know, when I disagree. And in fact, I, I would say that I thought the intro telling your story was, was really engaging. This is before. And it gets to the yeah. point of telling the story and engaging the audience. Now, well, I think you it's may, very important to tell the story. You I may just, not have liked I don't know, it was the body language or whatever, right. but I mean, the positive in my view was first of all, it's very difficult to do this. Yeah. You know, the biggest fear of most people is speaking in public, let alone to a seven billion people in the world. <laughs> so it takes right. some practice and you have to right. rehearse and all that. But in my view, I, I mean, the highlight of that, I think, was started off by telling a story and saying, I understand your problem. It's ethos, pathos, logos. It's the classic rhetoric oh, I, I triad. Know. And I think you yeah. did a good job. Thanks. I've given this talk 230 times. And I've given it both ways. Right. No, I just think you're wonderfully natural. I just didn't find the beginning feeling natural. I think the elements were terrific, which is you want people to know where you came from. And I think that the ideas that you're mentioning, I just found, and maybe it's because the same thing happens to me in the beginning of the talk. You just seem so, your body language is so much more natural uh, now than it was, let's say, for a couple of minutes where it was. You know, and that's maybe the beginning of And it. if it's worth anything, Earl had always criticized me for how I did surgery. So that he's an anesthesiologist who used to work the other side. Don't take it first. It really wasn't how he did surgery, it was the results. <laughs> <laughs> we have a little shtick going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah question. Uh, well, one of the things I wanted to add here, and one of the things being in so, we know Arlen only brings quality. Yeah. And so the idea of you telling your story and so forth shows us the quality he's already heard. And I think it was a great start. But at the same time, it's that fourth video, not the second. One minute, two minute, three minute. It's here for two hours because we already know the quality mm -hmm. and we're willing to listen to it. Mm -hmm. That's the way I saw it. Right. So I love the way you got started. It showed us how it can be done. Mm -hmm. so. Well, and I know it's a battle that everyone faces before they go on video. What am I going to say? And that was the thing that blocked me from producing my video for three months. Because I, I just had this misunderstanding to how I was going to communicate properly in this type of a format. And, and that, I think, is very educational. Yeah. Because I was, I was vulnerable, I was willing to let somebody else be the star on the camera, and to possibly fail. Right. It could have been a complete disaster. And it looked like it at first when the look on his face was total shock right. that I invited him to be a, a video communicator. He's probably never done that before either, but right. he was a great tile setter. Right. Well, you're doing a great job. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. I mean, 18% of the market is Hispanic. Mm -hmm. So what do you do, and maybe you'll get to this, but how do you address that do you have subtitles? Do you have a natural Hispanic speaking person be a representative? What do you do? Yeah, I do have an example of that for a client that I work for. The, the solution is that 
Arlen, you're going to be great at building trust with people that are your age and your gender. Just natural. You guys are going to have a lot of these similarities in common. As converse, Kaylee, Kelsey, Kelsey is not going to be maybe as good at communicating with your demographic, but she's going to be great at communicating with her own. So you've got to build your team of video spokespeople, not just one person at the top who makes all the videos. If you've got a product or a service, you've got to hit and find a spokesperson for every single one of those. And in the case study that I can show you, uh, I did a video with this bilingual person in English and in Spanish. And the advertising dashboards let me focus on just the Spanish speakers, the 18%, with the Spanish video. So it's very targeted, sniper-like marketing. So it starts with who's the customer. Yeah. And getting into all that, and you know, mm -hmm. what's the problem when they want to hear, what's your solution, and now you problem, all that. And so I say the first video you should make is for the most profitable persona. The person with the highest demand and the most amount of money. That's going to give you the highest return on your investment to do this. You're going to say, oh, I got, I got somewhere. Now we can move forward. You, you, you may get into this, but what do you think of using your customers in your videos? It's the most valuable piece, and I actually end with that. Okay. So we'll get to it. Because they are the demographic. It's, right? it's gold. It's pure gold. Yeah. If you can get that, you've got a timeless piece that will work for you endlessly forever. It's a testimonial. Yeah, question. Representing the engineers in the crowd. Uh -huh. uh, do you have a script or a Absolutely. Absolutely. Or that, that is another through? very valuable piece that we will get to, and you'll work on that. Yeah. Here's something I, I learned. I've, I've taken a few courses on, on online marketing, uh, one of which, of course, was just called the KLT course, which is No Life and Trust. Mm -hmm. Whereas everything about videos and everything is to get that uh, reaction that people mm -hmm. know you, like you. And one of the most valuable things I, I learned from a, from a sales point of view, which I keep in mind, is called feel, felt, found. Right. Have you ever heard that, feel, felt, found? Basically, something where you present something and, and, and you get an objection. Mm -hmm. And the structure of your answer should be, you know, I know how you feel. I felt the same way you did. But here is what we have found. Right? It basically puts the person on the other side for a moment of, of the objection. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, it's a very, well, a very good way of organizing even a, a short video. Um, it is. Kind of thing. I agree. Yeah. Go with what works for you. There's probably four other reasons that you haven't made a video yet, though. And they are the fear of equipment, the fear of technology, the fear of cost, and the fear of judgment. How much equipment do you need? Where are you going to put it? How much time are you going to spend to learn how to use the technology? Because an audio engineering degree takes three years and basically teaches you how to turn the volume up and down <laughs> with integrated music. I don't think any of us would like to waste three years on that degree. And in fact, the most worthless college degree is in video production. The cost. What are you get? Who's going to manage all this budget for talent and settings and yeah? Worst of all, what are people going to say? So that's when we had you do this uh, example of you know how to kind of get over that judgment, uh, but the. The spot on judgment that helped me was not that I was going to be judged, because I knew that was inevitable. It was that I didn't care if I was getting judged if I wasn't going to make a sale. Because that was not my time value analysis for what I was doing in making the video. The reason I was making the video is because I wanted to make a sale. And I knew that if I spoke directly to that target demographic, then I, I, would, I didn't care what anybody else said because it didn't matter to me. So I knew that I was really good at speaking to young, outgoing, um, energetic, 
single fathers that you know like to uh, take a risk and and trust their instinct. So that's how I made my video, and that's who I connected with, and that's how I made 90% of the sale before we actually signed the papers. And just <coughs> directly to my own avatar or myself, and if you're having trouble determining who's your demographic, just start with your own age and gender and go from there. So these are all the ways to overcome these fears. You know, the technology is free these days. Uh, the equipment, you're already carrying it around. So there's no reason not to start making videos and to start learning. I say that video is the best coach. Watching yourself two or three times will help you auto-correct or auto-adjust. I'm also a soccer coach, and I record uh, the second game of the season for my teams. And some of them, it's been the first time they've ever seen themselves on camera. Having that out-of-body experience, they auto-correct. And their, their next game is leaps and bounds above their game that I recorded on video. Because they, you know, there's no verbal communication that happens at all. The individual just observes themselves and auto-corrects. So this, this idea of farming says that we can micro-broadcast who we are in our local area and that one of the biggest common grounds for people to build is their geographical area. They just understand it's gonna be more convenient for both parties. So this is great if you have a, a local service or a product uh, that can be installed in your home. Uh, the, the advertising dashboards, how they're designed, let you just spend money in one zip code or in a four mile radius which is great because you don't have to waste money on people that can never buy from you. And each time they watch your video, it's like five cents. You know those little pre-roll videos on YouTube that you can skip? If the person that was presented with your video skips it, you pay nothing. <coughs> if they passively do nothing and watch it after 10 seconds, you pay like five cents per view. Compare that to direct mail or newspaper advertising or magazine advertising, and you can see the benefit of just being able, capable to create a video. What's the optimum length of a video? I think it's a minute. And for a video like this, introducing yourself, you're building trust with the viewer because they didn't have to waste any of their time. You know, it was like a minute of their time and they got to know what they needed to know in order to make a decision. So, yeah, it's a I, minute. I heard over two minutes they'll, they'll drop off. Get distracted. Well, they just won't, they won't watch anything more than two minutes. Well, and I think it depends on how they've got there. If it's if you're putting it in front of them on YouTube, maybe it's 20 seconds or 30 seconds. Yeah. There is a platform. If they follow a link to get to your video, then a minute or two is probably okay. I don't know whether you want to demo them or not, but there is a platform called Vidoyan, which allows you to use your video, uh, your webcam on your computer to create a video upload it, post it, and distribute it. But it automatically ends in two minutes. Mm -hmm. So you have a clock, it's like a monitor, and so you, you have to pre-script pre exactly what you're gonna say in two minutes, because it's gonna shut off. So it's a pretty good exercise, and I screwed around it and made a gazillion mistakes when I first used it. It's called Vidoyen, like a video doyen, V-I-D-O-Y-E-N. And we actually made a series of them uh, for soap. And if, so if you're in, we ought to do it now because I don't want to take up the time, but if you're interested in this platform, it's really pretty slick. Because you don't need anything but a laptop computer to make this work. And it really drives a lot of traffic. I stumbled onto it and then I got hooked on it. So I make a video like every day, talk about something until I got it right. Yeah, it was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so step one is research. Type the keyword into the Google search engine that you think should produce your business. Here's a couple tools that you can use to help you with those keywords. <coughs> one of them's called SpyFood, the other one's called lsigraph.com, and that can let you know what the volume is for some of those keywords. 
Is that a pay service? It's free. It's by free. What's the second? LSI graph? LSI graph. So does it tell you, like in keyword search, a lot of times when you're doing Google search, there's a, you have to pick how competitive it is. Like I'm in the mental health thing. If you, if you try to uh, do the, the uh, top ranking for depression, you're gonna spend a gazillion dollars. Yeah. Because it's so competitive. Right. So does this tell you what, is there a charge for uh, figuring out what video uh, is going to be the most productive or whatever? Or, or I hope to answer, that's a complex question, and I hope to answer it by the end of this workshop. We're not talking about the paid dashboards, but we are talking about the competitiveness of the keywords right. and the competitive uh, arena for getting ranked on the first page of Google. So by the end of this, I will have answered that. Okay. Come back to it if I have not. And you can divide it by state and national and national. That's how you get around it. You focus it on your local geography. You put a, a geographical tag on the keyword. And, and that allows you like to be Denver, much more relevant. Like Denver Depression. Well, if you have a service for that, yeah. So when you say put a tag on, is that a specific action or just that the geography two, word is inside the, the title? The geographic word is in the title. Okay. So if you have a national audience, you want to break it up into regions, cities, counties. Well, you've got to strategize your rollout. And it should work like the pebble in the pond. You make a big splash in your own backyard, yeah, yeah. and then you watch the concentric circles grow outwards as the growth happens naturally. But then, like, like say, when I'm rolling out a product in the next month, and it's targeted at Colorado. Mm -hmm. uh, and then afterward, I have to pick a new place to target. I suspect it will be Texas. Yep, great. So, so I will make a video that has the keyword Texas mm -hmm. in the title mm -hmm. when it's time to start reaching those folks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or you were talking about you know specific verticals. Yeah. So people might search for an app in that vertical. <coughs> right. Well, that'll be true of all of these videos. Yeah. But when I'm moving from Colorado and now I'm going to target Texas, I need to make new videos that have Texas in the title. Mm -hmm. Or I suppose I could rename an existing video, right? Because it's the name that it's searching. Yeah, but YouTube identifies duplicate content. Okay. So it'll toss out any video you try to do that with. Okay. So I have to edit it somehow. Yeah, 20%. 20%, okay. I found that also gets more complicated when you hashtag blogs. Yeah. So it's a whole hashtag thing. But then when you embed video into the blog or the newsletter, now you're getting more complicated. So there's all, I mean, for amateurs, there's only so much you can do. There's only 24 hours in a day. So my view is, do something, and you're gonna screw it up the first five, six times, and learn and figure it out, and go to these things and talk to people, and go, okay, I didn't get the penetration I thought I should, look at my video, tell me why, they'll say, well, you didn't have the right talk, you know, and all these tags in the, in the pot, and every time you mention it in the body of the blog, it adds to your SEO, so you have to just learn how to, it's like anything else, you just screw it up and learn from it and go on. This is a great, practice in SEO. It's a micro effort. It's a micro SEO effort that produces big SEO results. Step two, this is the storyboard that the engineer referred to in the back. How do we construct our video so that we can put a formula to it and recreate it every time? This is a very valuable piece of this presentation. I would recommend keeping this. I will give you my slides at the end. So. Uh, you can share this easily. I was going to ask you that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you say this was going to be recorded too? We can this is also recorded, yeah. On Facebook? Is on our Facebook okay. soap page, yeah. So the hook, it's five seconds. Facebook, so. This is the part of the video that compels someone yeah. to continue watching or to not watch. We already know that's one of the two things they're going to do, so we might as well compel them to leave if the video is not for them. You know what that does? It's a reverse psychology thing. What do you mean I should, shouldn't watch this? I'll do whatever I want. And people start to watch it. 
So you just say, you know, if you're this person who wants this, this is a great video. <laughs> Next is the brand placement. This is a, a four second animated graphic of your logo with music that you're gonna use over and over and over again. Because we know uh, from the marketing textbooks that people don't trust our brand until they see it seven to nine times. So this is our, this is our attempt to make sure that they've <coughs> recognized our brand several times so that we have a high level of trust with our viewers. It seems like <coughs> one of the users just adds another level of complexity on a cell phone, or am I just 200 years behind? Depends what tool you're using. I've learned this week. Mm -hmm. So the answer is no. It's just <coughs> simple to add music. And okay. Yep. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be of, of a song and artist you recognize. There's all this background music stuff that's inside the tools already. So all you gotta do is turn it on. And that's cool. Yeah. So I've recorded uh, some of these already. I'll record some of them with you, and then I'll put them together so that you can see how it works. Uh, the pain is the biggest relationship building piece. This is the thing that you've experienced and that the viewer has experienced that you both want to avoid. A really good one is wasting a time. Nobody likes to waste time. So if you can help somebody save some time with a little video, boom, you just build lots of value with them. So this is the chance where you kind of like stick in the knife and twist it a little bit and point out <coughs> how much you want to avoid this thing. Whether it's damage, whether it's too much cost, whether it's saving time. This builds that bridge, that common ground that you the video spokesperson and then the viewer have in common. And it's also the thing that your service, your problem solves. Question? Say you got three or four of those. Should that be three or four independent videos? Yes. Don't try to confuse me. Yeah. Confused mind says. Pick one, make a video for it. Pick another, make a video for it. Right. So then the USO or the unique service offering is your title, what you do. Now you've earned the right to say who you are. You've delivered the value. Okay, now I'm willing to hear what you're all about. Well, my name is Anthony Pritchard. I'm a YouTube specialist, and I live in Denver, Colorado. My call to action is now what they can do next. Kind of depends which video this is. If it's the very first video that they've ever seen of me, I probably don't want to ask them to get married right away. I probably want to say, let's go on a few dates first. Uh, let's let's go you know if you're interested in learning more I've got some more content for you to consume if you'd like a, an additional good experience let's build this relationship virtually a little more nurture it cultivate it have ways for them to interact with you realtors love to say I'll be your tour guide you want to learn about my neighborhood I'll I've got a passenger seat that's wide open here let's go on a tour if you uh, want to give people a tour of your medical clinic, or if you want to give people a back-end look at your software, whatever it is, it should be natural and it should also be low risk. How do you track analytics? What's the easiest way? Well, for the video, there's a button called Video Analytics in your YouTube or your Facebook. You can see how long they've watched it. You can see how many people have watched it. You can see how long the overall watch time is for all the viewers. You can see what parts of the country people have watched it from. Okay, but what, what, what actual data does that really give you, though? So they watched it 30 seconds versus a minute. I mean, you can see what part of the video most of the traffic dropped off and say, what did I do there that caused them to drop off? How can I improve my video? Yeah, I guess my question gets to that, and that is, while this, while these, I call them vanity numbers, are interesting and are helpful, like you just demonstrated, what we really want to know is what's the conversion rate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So how do you, and I have a very hard time figuring that out, because we have, and I'll, I'll just use soap as an example, we got these million different channels, blogs and videos and websites and webinars and you name it, mm -hmm. My ultimate objective is to, one objective, not exclusively, is to convert prospects to dues paying members. Mm -hmm. So I wanna know, if I do X, what's the likelihood 
Or what do I need to do, because it's gonna take seven to nine interventions to get them to convert to a dues paying member. And I have a really hard time finding that out. This, this could be a whole class in itself, Arnold. <laughs> and you're at a level that's probably in the top 10% compared to other business owners who have explored it this far. You don't even know to ask that question until you've gone as far as you've gone. So a conversion can be them giving you their email, them calling you. That's the biggest one for a lot of local businesses. They want calls, and then their in-house person's in charge of closing the call. It could be that they actually gave you dues or made a payment. The way you track that is with the thank you page that's programmed to be delivered to this person as soon as they give you what you want or what you consider a conversion. In that thank you page is a cookie. It's a pixel. You've, you've now captured this person's information because they've received the thank you page. They didn't receive the thank you page until you got what you wanted. And now you can see where they first were interacted with your business and how many days it took them to come back to your website, what videos they viewed, and so on. It's called the attribution model, and that's all in Google Analytics. And you set it up with event tracking. So it sounds like we need a course in digital bakery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like how to create cookies and use them. And, and then there's the whole disclosure, you know, that little statement at the bottom. You're going to. We're Privacy cookies, statement. You got to agree with it, blah, blah. And it gets pretty complicated, but it sounds like we need more education. If you care to sit through that kind of thing. Yes. Well, well you can't track it otherwise. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just right. you're saying a prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I use Bitly a lot, and if I'm emailing somebody, I create a own Bitly for them, and if they share with anybody, then I can see through Bitly that they came in and they went, and I try to track it that way. Mm -hmm. So any web address that I send out links or for anything, whether it's video or anything else, I try to track it through a bit. It's a separate thing, but. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one comment, because we're all kind of alluding to it, I think what you have to be very clear on is what is the goal of this particular video? In other words, is this for list generation? So just as your analogy that you don't immediately ask for a proposal for marriage, you know, there's a, there's a courtship in a sense. Um, videos should be staged and sequenced in a way that's natural for the sales process. And the normal process is to um, generate a list of, uh, of good prospects, people who are interested in this field. Mm -hmm. And the normal way is how do I get their email in print? And the way that's normally done is called an ethical bribe, which is, right? You, you basically, the, the value of the, that one to a two minute video is to get them to, a, let's say, a tip sheet. Here are the five ways that you can increase your, your drive on a golf course by 30 yards. Here's the tip. People want something like a tip sheet. Yes. And they're willing to give up their email. And that tip sheet or that video that you're going to give them for free really is the way in which You've already now only spent a couple, couple of minutes, but those people who are willing to now get that free PDF, yeah. normally a video, yeah. which might be five minutes longer, yeah. you know, a longer video, right. these people have already shown that they are willing to give up their email address, and that's what you're getting. Right. So that's usually the first step, is yeah. really develop a list of prospects. How many people agree with him? I would agree. Mm -hmm. So we, we've got almost the majority there, yeah. that are, Virtual relationship should end in us capturing some of their information with this ethical bribe. Right. So I'll give you the counterpoint. I only read the soap stuff because I know it's you. I get gobs of other stuff that I don't read. So just capturing an email address as a lead gen tool by itself is weak because well, people's inboxes are full of stuff they don't bother to read. Now, if you said, how would you like me to contact you when they gave you their email, that's a different story. Because so if you just got their email address some way, the odds of them reading it go way down. So I'll give you a couple, I, I agree with you, but in, in the case of, and again, I keep coming back to soap because then I can't pick on anybody else, it's just me and I screwed up. Um, 
What we find is that the single biggest predictor of converting a prospect to a dues-paying member, as was exemplified this morning, is a personal relationship with me or someone affiliated with me, and attendance at a SOAP chapter meeting. So if you, that's the biggest predictor of converting the funnel. But my point is, if you had my email address, Right. But I didn't know you personally. Yeah, after. Just, I would not read this over. Exactly. Right. I read it because it's you. And that's just about, and that means building brand, that personal brand right. equity up front. Because mm -hmm. if you just create this and nobody knows who the hell you are, right. they'll blow it off. So, so I'll give you another. The key, the key that, that we're trying to talk about is not, I mean, we, I could buy a list of people. Yeah. And those are not going to be people that, the key is that, the, it's the way you grab their email. You got their email address because they showed interest. They waved their hand that they want that little tip sheet or that little video. Right. That's, a, that's, that's the relationship that was developed in that one minute video. Yeah. You got them to the next stage. So that's a qualified, interested person. So, so five I'll, after, I'll, I'll, five I'll, after nine. Okay. Can, can I give a 30 second snippet here? I got a lot of customers. They're in the wine and beer industry. Right, so I'm not medical field at all. I can tell you firsthand knowledge this is true. The wineries and breweries that make that founder, owner, winemaker, beer maker part of the story are way more successful. Yeah. Way, way, way more successful mm -hmm. in, in, in generating loyalty, tribe, people who follow them. I think out of respect to our speaker, yeah. we should all get out of the weeds and let Anthony get on with his talk. Right. Because he's got certain points he wants to cover. That's no matter how interested you, 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 or I am in a particular topic. By the way, I love this topic. Yeah. Okay. Well, well let's and just I think get this on. is central to it because yeah. this is how you it, it make is, your brand about you. It does help in the full comprehension of what we're doing and yeah. each component has its place. So let's move on to tell yeah, us how to do that's it. That's the call to action, right? We've got to get them to engage further. What do we get them to do to engage further? These are uh, the tools that I use. You know, Google Photos is like my my capture, my video loss prevention tool. Because as soon as I hit a Wi-Fi, all the images and videos in my phone get sucked up to the cloud with this free tool. Unlimited storage for all videos and images. Next, I pick a video editing app. Uh, there's a text animation similar to a logo animation app that's free called Legend. It's also a, called Keyword Animation Tool. And then Magisto. Magisto uses artificial intelligence to help me edit my videos. And it's taken a three hour project of editing a video down to three minutes. And so I value that. <coughs> It's a low cost solution to video editing. I think it's annual professional level where you can pull in these audio clips and uh, unlimited Getty images or Getty videos to your videos that you create for $120 a year. So I, I find that it's worth it. Yeah. But just improving the production quality of your video to above average will do the job of catching most people's attention. The, uh, on the Google Photos, I know that they they allow for unlimited storage at their at their compressed <coughs> rate or mm -hmm. with compressed, and the more you can pay extra for the for uh, higher res. And what do you do? I use I use Google Drive. Okay. So I I intentionally send my video clips from my phone to a Google Drive folder, and that captures them in the highest re resolution. But okay. If I was to lose my phone or... As opposed to Google Photos. Right. Okay. So I use Google Photos. So Photo. you like it because the resolution? Is that what you're saying? It's better than Google Photos. So it's oh, the, it's the better <laughs> overall organization tool. Google Drive. Which I think I mentioned in the previous slide. Okay, so here's the formula. Here's how we get those videos ranked on the first page of Google. We know what the keyword is. That's what we discovered before we started making our video. That's gonna be in the title. The keyword is the title. Then we go into the description. The, the keyword has to be in the description. The snippet is the first two lines. 
Whenever you copy and paste this URL, it's going to have the title and the first two lines of the description in wherever you paste it. So let those two lines explain the most about the content as possible. In the description, you can even say everything you say in the video. Some people think that they can still get more out of a piece of content by reading it than by watching it. So give them what they want. Um, the name, address, and phone number. This is very important because Google already recognizes that same sequence of letters and numbers exist in several other directories around the internet. Now your video has that same sequence and it's, it's connecting all those other listings to your video. It's saying, oh, this is not just a fly-by-night operation. This is an existing organization that has many different touch points around the web. You can use your map link, the URL to your map link, uh, other URLs to your social media profiles, uh, hashtag strategy, and other resources. So other resources is like when you type your keyword into the Google search engine, what shows up on the first page? If it's not your competitor, pick it up, use it, put it in the description of your video, and Google recognizes your video now is also being related to that first page result. So let's say Wikipedia shows up on the first page for dog parks in Rhino. And you put that in your description of your video that you're publishing to YouTube, Google recognizes that you're being a good resource and you're a good result for people who are looking for dog parks in River North. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Step five is the meta tags and I'll go through this when I actually do my upload. Uh, step six and seven, the advanced settings. I say this is kind of like an SAT test. The more uh, options you fill out, the better. It asks you if there's any, if it's made for kids, uh, it asks you where it was made. It asks you what date it was made on. It asks you if it's ever aired in, on US television or anywhere else. Click those boxes, answer those little questions, and get more relevancy results with YouTube and Google. Okay, so this is where uh, I'm actually gonna record the video and I have to just set this up over here since I would like to use this. Um, I, I went ahead and re uh, put down all this information in a Word doc. And now I'm just going to record this video and invite people to join us. The keyword I chose was video marketing workshop for entrepreneurs in the River North area. Is that a relevant keyword for what we're doing here today? Everybody can agree on? Okay, so hopefully by the end of this, we will show this video up on the first page of Google for that keyword, video marketing workshop for entrepreneurs, or maybe just the video itself. Okay, uh, so I like to use a microphone. That's one thing that's very important for production quality. People will turn off a video for bad audio before they'll turn it off for bad video. Because they need to at least hear what you're saying. They don't necessarily need to see what you look like. Okay. Uh, Ten bucks at Micro Center, by the way. Right. Nice and nice and inexpensive. In case you're thinking that's an expensive thing. Yeah. And then you can get 25 feet of extension cable for another 10 bucks. Yeah. Just did that this week, too. Okay, so I'm here at the Enterprise North location in the River North neighborhood giving a workshop on all the best practices for entrepreneurs on YouTube. So I just wanted to pose a question to the class. What do you think of the workshop so far, guys? Yay! Yay! Awesome! <laughs> Great, 21 seconds. And uh, while, while I'm... So where do you get those things? That thing? 
that you just had about the cord. Oh, this thing? Yeah, that yeah. thing. So, so there's a bunch of these. This one I actually invented myself, and I have a patent on it. Oh. But I'm sadly <laughs> not a manufacturer, oh. and people are able to do better than me at manufacturing this. So I just include it in, as a part of my premium package, but there are selfie sticks all over the place. So, Are you familiar with Micro Center? Yes, oh yeah. Okay. Right. Anything you yeah. could want yeah, right, to right. be doing things for this, it's you can find It's called a selfie it. stick, okay. Right. What do you call it? Micro Center? Micro Center, it's in, just north of the tech center. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's an electronics store, so if you want special lighting, if you want special microphones, and anything from ten dollars to a thousand dollars, they have it. Another tip that he taught me and that we demonstrated was when we do our big upload at the uh, the soap meetings. You, those of you who've been there have seen this. Um, if they're interactive like this, so when you talk, if you don't have you mic'd up, mm -hmm. it, the video, the audio doesn't right. do well. Yeah. So he taught me make sure you have a portable microphone or you hand one of these around or right. you have several of them, and it really helps a lot. Yes, okay, so what does everyone ask when they come to your website for the first time? What's the first two questions they ask? Why should I care? Why should I care? What do you sell? <laughs> How much does How it much cost? How <laughs> much does it cost? Or um, what do you do, I guess? What, what yes? Is, how can it help me? Okay. How to contact me? How to contact? Well, I might be wrong, but I think when somebody goes to the website, they want to know who's the, who's it belong to and what do they do? If I know that, then it gives me the information I need to go further and find how much does it cost, how do I call them, uh, what does it do, or how does it benefit. So that sounds a lot like our elevator pitch, doesn't it? Okay, so while I'm organizing these video files, uh, I will ask you to do another activity. Turn to your partner, give them your phone, and recite your elevator pitch. Yeah, get yeah, you know, I guess you're going Sure. I've only done this. <laughs> <laughs> right. I should have done it before. Okay. 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 Right. So, you need a medical question. and have an idea of what to do with it. Well, I had to get started for global biomedical and we provide education resources to their members. I to I to I to I to I to I So, uh, can I have your can I have your attention, please? It, it always forgive me. That's the nature. No. That's the nature of this group. No. Um, everyone wants to know for the engineers in the room what's the script for the value prop. There is a very clear script for the value prop, and that is, and I didn't invent it. There's three or four other people that do this crossing the chasm, and there's a whole bunch of other ones, but. The typical value proposition, it's the pickup line, it's the elevator pitch, and that is, the template is for, and here you mention who is the customer. So I'll give you again the soap pitch, just to use as an example. For physicians who are interested in biomedical and clinical innovation and entrepreneurship. That's the target segment. 
okay? It's not actually true because it's an open network, but that's what I'm gonna say. Two, what's their problem? Who are looking for ways to get their ideas to patients, which incidentally is the mission statement of SOAP, okay? So if you're a doctor and you have an idea but you don't know what to do with it, so that's who's the customer, what's your problem, and then what's your solution? We are a nonprofit global biomedical and clinical innovation and entrepreneurship network providing education, resources, networks, mentors, experience, peer to peer support, and non clinical career development. That's what we do. Now, I've only said this 2,000 times. So you can tell it just kind of flows. So you have to practice it and repeat it over and over again. More importantly, why are you different? You that your sustainable selling proposition, he called it your unique selling proposition or unique selling offering. Why is so different? Because we're a physician-led nonprofit led by physicians for physicians, and we're the biggest in the world. That's it. Then there's a call to action. Our website is www.soapnet.org. We encourage you to join us. So maybe when you now, when you do this exercise, use the, now, I can tell you that there are workshops that last a day to drill down on this value proposition, because you constantly redo it. It's really hard to, to focus all this, but give this a shot. You want to redo it? Okay. All right. You want to try that? I like reading it. All right. Okay. So, doing it over and over and over again. I liked what he said. Yes. Yes. So four, who's your customer? I want to So here's another way of thinking. Here's another way of thinking. If you were to place LinkedIn on a job, what is the job title of the person you're trying to So if you're the CFO of a biotech, that's a title. Who is the Okay, so my understanding of your system is that your customer is any who signs a contract. But I don't want the money. I want three words. You can spell it. This is a pickup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
somebody who's so that's what it's going to take for you to have the confidence to go forward and, and do it on video. But um, we, do we don't have time for that. The class is coming to a close shortly, so I wanted to just direct your attention to my YouTube channel because I'm about to upload uh, this video that I just edited. Now, I didn't share with you my editing process on Magisto, but I will offer you the tutorial at the end of this class so that you can see how I did that. This is the button right here in the upper right hand corner of my page. And uh, you can tell that YouTube suggests content for me based on my behavior. It knows that I love soccer, uh, MMA, uh, more soccer, I guess. Kids getting haircuts. Yeah, I, I don't know where that one came from. But. <laughs> You know, they're trying to give us a good experience by seeing what are the things we're interested in. Okay, so there's the, the button that you need to know about. It looks like a little camera with a plus in the middle of it. And you can click the upload video. So that just got put into my uh, downloads folder. So there so it is. you basically took the video. What is the name of your page, by the way? Okay. Anthony Pritchard Communications. You took the video, you, you edited it, you download and you stored it in your phone into a file. Into and now you are uploading that file to this site. In the, you said it was in OneDrive file? That's where you like to put it? Is that what you're saying? The drive, yeah, the Google Drive. The, I mean the Google Drive, yeah. Right. So if you go here to my drive, <coughs> it's under here, and I think it's under speaking. There it is. And then I put it under YouTube for entrepreneurs. Here's the, the, the raw video clips that I recorded and dumped into that folder. Okay, so back over here in, not right now, but Rhino. <laughs> so that's our, that's our keyword, video marketing workshop for entrepreneurs in River North. I'll, I'll go over again more about this once we actually do the, the, the proof of concept and we go look for it. So okay. here's the description. Remember I went over that description formula? I've got it all right here in, in a Google Doc. Basically a Word Doc. I don't need the title. I already have the title. So 
So this is a co-working space that has random workshops and I'm doing a, a, a workshop on you know best practices with video. So I can also choose a thumbnail and I can design my own thumbnail with Canva. If you don't know about Canva, it's great at helping you with thumbnails. YouTube thumbnail. Uh, let's look for one that looks like a workshop. There we go. And we'll call this and then we'll change this from red from blue to red. And hit download. And this is all free by the way. It took me about 20 seconds. So that's a good tool. And then I'll go over here and upload it. This is going to help me because it's going to improve. Maybe that one's better. I already did that for my slide deck. I'll just use that one. It's going to improve my performance when YouTube suggests my video in the right-hand column. Mm -hmm. Videos that have custom thumbnails like this get clicked on more. When they get clicked on more, YouTube shows them more. Because YouTube's goal is to give people a good experience. So I, I click playlist and I should have YouTube for entrepreneurs in here. I guess not. Uh, training videos. Probably a good one. Uh, yes, it's made for kids. I don't have any swear words in here. The, a kid, if they was interested enough, would want to watch this. And then more options. This is where I go into uh, the meta tags, right? Uh, I guess this is this is a part of, but I have to put the keyword in here. Have uh, you suggested these meta tags, or did you put those in there? These are my default auto defaults that I have in there. Okay. They default okay. already. So I'm putting other keywords in that people might type because this video could also rank for more than one keyword. Would you be looking those up or do you just know? I'm just kind of using my instinct. Oh, okay. I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of somebody who might want this training. And I'm thinking, I'm saying, what would they type in? If they got so frustrated with their current situation right. and they were willing to do whatever it took to change their life, what would they type into the Google search engine? Right there. If you go to Google also, it'll tell you which keywords get the most hits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for example, business gets like a gazillion hits right. versus innovation or entrepreneurship. So, and there's a list. So there's a way to stratify the keywords to see which ones get the most traffic. Okay. I'm actually gonna put this address into YouTube. It's asking me for location. So the more specific I am, the better score I get on my SAT test. Um, this is education. I can let anybody comment. Standard YouTube license. And then we're going from details to video elements to visibility. I don't want to add any cards in here, but if I could, I could put something on the end screen that said go to my website or go to my YouTube channel or go to this other YouTube video. So I'm okay with this. And then publish. I want to publish it now. And that's the link. So I could schedule it for a future publishing. <coughs> and um, I'm ready to go. So there it was. Can these be published repetitively? Or do you have to change the, you just get one pub, delayed publishing date? Yeah, like I said, dual content, or things of the same exact duplicates, five duplicates will, will get bounced. So they won't, won't get published. I see. 
if as soon as it gets into the YouTube system, it's going to cross-reference its whole library. If it finds a duplicate, you're balanced. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that that's it. There it is. Now. So can you then share that we, to go back to that last screen where you're going to yeah. share it on social? Yeah. It's, you got to share up. this button there. That's his YouTube yeah. channel. <laughs> yeah, I see. I know what you're talking about. This this would be how I would share it. Like I go to, to LinkedIn. But does it have a share this link? I thought I saw a link or social media tag uh, buttons on the previous screen. Um, on other screens, you'll see that little arrow that hooks. Yeah. On this screen, it's just right here. It's the same thing right here. Okay, but you have to copy the video link to each social media button. Google Analytics. There's not a share this link. Okay, so that distributes it for you. Okay. It, it, if you open it, there will be share options that not only you have, everybody, everybody who sees right. it. That's what I mean. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So here's an example of that, I guess. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. There's that. So I'm giving the Google Spiders some time to index that video, to find it, and to rank it. Here are my action items for being better at producing video in your own organization. I say make it for one person. Find out your avatar and start making videos for that one person so that you can prove to yourself that you can get good at communicating on video. Make it compelling, credible, and creative. Just 30 minutes a week is all it really takes to create a measurable impact. Um, a list of 20 videos that you know you should make right now, I think everybody can sit down and spend a few minutes to type those out or write them out so that they can start planning ahead for what they'll be making. Show that social proof, that evidence, make the background congruent with what you're talking about the best you can. Be vulnerable, be yourself. Biggest trust building investment is, I mean, not trying to hide. Video won't let you really pretend or be, be somebody else. You're gonna come off as bogus. <coughs> so if you like it, then teach it. That's the best way to be a thought leader. If you learn something, the best way to learn it yourself is to teach it to other people. So learn it well enough that you can teach it to other people. And this is a, a form of um, social media content delivery, ace, ace, aces. <coughs> Do something that's authoritative, that allows for connection and engagement, and then sizzle. It's kind of similar to our storyboard formula, but this is how people connect uh, and build trust on social media. And it's kind of a rhythm you can follow with your, your own social media content. Okay. So that should be enough time. Let's go to Google, and we're gonna actually open up an incognito window, which doesn't have any of my behavior associated with it. So Google keeps track of my behavior, and it produces the best results for me based on my tracking that they've done. Well, an incognito is completely blank slate, and it has no none of my prior search history in it. So I'll type in video marketing workshop for entrepreneurs in Rhino and see, oh, Bazinga, there it is. <laughs> All right, so um, let's, let's see what it says, right? Three seconds and 
It makes a good impression, a good introduction. Question. That's so specific that anybody that types that in will find it, but as far as a marketing tool, how can anybody find it? Okay, so let's just type in You notice I left out for entrepreneurs. Okay. Video workshop marketing. It still shows up. Okay. So now I'm ranking for more than one keyword. Okay. Phrase. Let's try again. What happens when you just put video marketing? <laughs> be, okay, that be a million. Probably a million of them. Yeah, really. Yeah, right. So I didn't show up for that keyword. What was it? What, what was video the Video marketing workshop. Okay. This is what came for that. What, what was the video marketing workshop in Denver? See what it picks up. Well, you I was going to put for entrepreneurs in here. Well, that'll no, that's, that's what works out already there. We already Same saw Denver. that. Yeah. So that's up. Yeah, but but, you but I, I left off River North. Yeah. Well. So could this be an, a national keyword result? Okay. For entrepreneurs. Yeah. Right. Whoa. That's different, huh? Yeah. That could be that could be major. I could I could have just taken my one video that I my goal was the local geographical tag and I and I, now I made a national ranking video for this keyword. So you can see the value for SEO in calling awareness to your company for who it is and what you do. Did you put any meta tags in or no? Yes, I did. Okay. Oh yeah. So if you had put in Denver, you know a lot of people wouldn't think of Rhino necessarily. But let's say you put in Denver uh, on a meta tag, then maybe they would have come up uh, just as somebody's just saying, "Is there something in Denver?" So as long as we have a little bit of time, um, yeah. Are you done? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Um, so go this. to. I just want to demonstrate <laughs> that the Doyen thing because I think it's fine and it's a, and it's it's a really cheap and easy and you know, I mean way to do this. It's another way to kind of skin the cat. Yeah, so go to the Doyens and uh, so again, you'll see that the, the you can, you got to sign in and then you, but actually if you put Society of Physician Entrepreneurs or SoapNet up there, SOAP, just put SOAP. Yeah, there you go. Go back and then click that. So just click anyone. That was an error loading, click another one. Now there's a lot of errors. I'm Dr. Ron Myers, the president and CEO of the Society of Physician Entrepreneurs. Um, what are uh, three reasons why patients uh, are bad early? Bad light, terrible background. Early um, evangelism is a concept uh, <laughs> that is part of the new startup methodology. It basically involves finding people who are uh, adopted yeah. early adopters. Thank you, Sam.
Uh, and uh, we have created an attitude where patients basically are expecting the best uh, for the least amount of money. If you're a physician entrepreneur or any other kind of entrepreneur and you're looking for early evangelists, particularly in the digital health space, you might want to think twice about uh, whether patients uh, are capable of helping you get that uh, minimally viable product to the next unicorn. Um, I'm Dr. Robin Myers, President and CEO of the Society of Physician Entrepreneurs, and I look forward to your comments. Thank you. So it's a, it's, it's a really simple platform. Yeah, but he says he and, and again, and you might have noticed, it also has a side, That's what I was going to mention. a script. Like you, well, you write your own script. Do any, so you don't have to worry about you, I'm gonna freeze, what am I gonna say? You, you, know, you can put them with like highlights and power, whatever. So you can sort of see my so eyes diverting a little bit, when I'm, but I, I was using it to pace what I was going to say. And you practice it several times. Which you've done it properly. And yeah, you, you, you do it, and then you don't like it, you delete it. You start all over again. So you <laughs> practice it, uh, practice it, practice it, until you like what you see, and you post it. What's really nice is the whole environment. If you go back to where, if you go down to show his video again, all this, all this is very, very good, the way it's organized. Yeah. Ask a question, subscribe, contact, you know, um, I, I like that very much. It shows what else. Yeah. It's a do. very slick, a guy in Canada invented it, yeah. built it, still up there. If you want to, and I, I would, if anybody can post on this, it's, an, it's you, you make yourself the key opinion leader, or the thought leader, whatever you call yourself. You simply log in, you get, create a, uh, and then you just flow with it. I don't see on the social media on the bottom of YouTube getting one of them. Right. Uh, YouTube is not on that, but you can certainly share it. Or and upload the same raw or video. Or upload, yeah, raw video, whatever. Yeah. It's just a really slick, easy, no brainer, no cost, make a bunch of mistakes, erase it, do it again. What's the likelihood of someone finding Bedoyan over YouTube? Because I've never heard of this. <clears throat> well, you have to promote, I mean, that's why you see these. You have to target. Which gets to my final point, because we're running out of time, and that is, this has been fabulous. I mean, this is worth the weight of gold, and thanks a lot for what you did. Mm -hmm. But, this is just one element in your strategic marketing and communications plan. If, 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 if this is all you do, make a video, it's not gonna get you there. This is from your laptop? This is from my laptop. But what I'm saying is, newsletter, I mean, who's the customer? What's the value proposition? How are you delivering it? To whom? How are you following up on digital marketing or automated digital marketing? Social media, face-to-face, -face, newsletters, chapter meeting. It's a whole strategy. And, and how do you connect the dots? Because again, it doesn't do you any good to hand me a scalpel if I don't know how to operate. Knowing how to make a movie without knowing what to do with it in the marketing plan to satisfy your objective is worthless. So you really need a plan. It starts with a marketing plan. Where does YouTube fit? Another class. Yeah, so I, I like, um, one of the things that I found very helpful, I, I, uh, I probably spent a fortune with, with people like Mike Koenigs, who, who started Traffic Guys, who's kind of like the, one of the video gurus um, in, in his seminars in San Diego and taking and, and subscribing to various things. One of the things he mentioned that I, I remember very well, as far as when you think about what content I want to deliver, I mean, um, how do, if I want to create 10 videos, he has what's called a 10 by 10 by 10 formula. And the first 10 is, is come up with five FAQs, frequently asked questions. Each one might be a two minute video. And then five SAQs. SAQs are should ask questions. Uh, really, you know, it gives you right there 10 videos. Yeah. And then his 10 by 10 is then he, he shows you 10 different platforms they should be delivered on. You know, not everything, just as much. You know, you, if, you, if all your marketing is just video stuff, but you also have to deliver it to the way people want to consume stuff. Yeah. And, and, and you know, the, 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 the new, he says, be ubiquitous, be everywhere. 
okay? So 10 by 10 by four, it gives you another, but basically, quick 10 videos is FAQs and SAQs. Well, quickly for five minutes, Arlen, if you like, uh, this was your first class, the big Y. It's the getting ranked on the first page of Google. I've got two more classes. Uh, the next one is editing, getting better on camera, learning how to say what to say it and how to look good. And then finally, it's the advanced advertising. Now, once you've proven that you're good at video, how do you start broadcasting in your own neighborhood? Uh, I've got two, three offers for you, two free and one as the lost leader. Um, my business card has a formula on the back that can help anyone to give a great uh, two minute testimonial. And uh, a testimonial is the most valuable video you can have on your website because it helps reduce the risk for anybody who's looking to buy from you. And whenever you ask anybody for a video testimonial, they say, what do I say? So just stab them with this card and you'll be great. Uh, the next is my slides. So use this bit.ly link, type it into the search engine, or take a photo with, your, with the QR code. All the, all the photos now have this, see that orange thing that came up? You can just tap on that web page and it'll take you to uh, my slides and a video tutorial of the presentation that you just witnessed. So if you want to share it with somebody else, or if you want to review it yourself, you can watch that video and get my slides. Finally, if you'd like me to do it for you, I'll spend a half day in your office and I'll knock it out. You'll have a video on your website and a video uh, that advertises your business for you. Just use this sign up sheet right here. Pick one of the 10 spots that I have available left in February. This is for February only. I'm all done with my work this month. So the rest of my days I thought I would offer to you to see if you know, you uh, wanted to knock out the video problem. So there it is. How much is the... How much is that? It's free just, just one ninety nine for two and a half hours of work. And uh, I will I'll make sure that half day. your video problem is solved. Do you want to turn, turn that over? Do you want to turn my phone over? Sorry. Yeah, let's turn it over. Thanks. So my question is...